What is up guys, we're here back in with another brand new video. Today we are talking about Helix Piercing 101s. Everything you need to know about Helix Piercing. So let's get started. All right, number one on the list is the location of the helix piercing. Now, a lot of times people call helix piercing cartilage, same thing, just different wordage. The helix piercing is located in the upper section of the ear. I mean, you probably probably see on the screen, but like this region right over here, or which in the screen is circled or highlighted, is the helix piercing. So that is the location. So it goes from here, and there's also comes to the front area too. That's a little bonus, like a frontal helix or front helix or forward helix. But yeah, that's the helix area the cartilage little area. So that's the location, not down here, because that's your lobes, not in here, because that's your conch, just that outer flat region right here that's like a flat surface. Number two on the list is healing time. Now with the helix piercing, AKA the cartilage piercing, let's call it helix piercing guys, it takes about six to eight months or even more to heal. Less blood flow to the area, so it does take a lot of time. Plus, depending on what you guys do, as far as the cleaning, if you're not sleeping on it, et cetera, et cetera, it could prolong or extend or push the healing time to be even longer, so it does, it does take a while for it to heal. It is a pain in the butt a little bit. She so has some patience, but yeah, takes a while for it to heal. Number three on the list is starting jewelry. Now, the initial piercing is always gonna be a little bit longer than the normal than the one it's like downside, which can be the next one. But for the helix piercing, generally you do not want to start off with the hoop because of the complication of the cause. But if you want any other kinds of designs, whether it's like a, just a regular basic ball, gems, stars, clusters, flowers, moons, butterflies, more flowers, thunderbolts. I mean, the list goes on of the, a lot of cute styles and designs you can do from. Just consult with your local producer or visit losebodyjewel.com who's got all that available for you in titanium and 14 karat gold. So yeah, usually for the initial piercing, they're gonna start you off with a longer piece of jewelry just to compensate for the swelling and healing time and to get all kinds of debris and gunk and blood and pus. I mean, it's gonna go through like the healing processes. So you wanna make sure it's long enough to clean it and deal with all the swelling and stuff. So, moving on to the next one, right off the bat number four, is downsizing. Once your piercing is on the healing stages, you wanna make sure to go in and get a shorter piece of jewelry, because if you get something that's long and it's already healed, it can get, it get caught into things, or just move back and forth too much, which causes a lot of irritation, causes those irritation or piercing bumps. So, you wanna make sure you go get it downsized, get it fit properly, you're getting for, you're going to like a fitting round, or like a downsizing round, so you get that fit, the fitted look is what I'm trying to say. The fit snug look, flush to your ear. It's not sticking out, it's not too big, it's not too hunky, it's not all over the place. It's just like the perfect look. And then maybe, possibly, if it's fully healed, then you could change it. But it depends. You just want to go shorter a few months in. Number five on the list is aftercare, the funnest part of the day. Now, you want to make sure you're cleaning it twice a day with a saline solution, cleaning the front and the back. You don't want to put any kind of alcohol, no peroxide, no ointment, no lotions no creams, potions, or serums. All you really need is a saline solution. You can either spray them directly and then wipe it off with a gauze or a Q-tip, or you could spray the Q-tip and clean the front, clean the back twice a day, no more, no less. That's pretty much what the aftercare. And some tips along with that is, of course, trying to sleep on it, when you're changing, washing your hair, getting your hair done, like, don't make sure to get pulled or yanked on it because it'll cause some irritation. And just leave it alone. Don't mess with it. Don't play with it. Let the body heal. Don't overclean it as well because a lot of time overcleaning can cause a lot of complications too. So just leave it the hell alone. Bonus round tips for you guys. Number one, I would say is switching out too early, causing a lot of irritations and stuff like that. Just let it heal and then you can switch it out. Premature switching, not cool. Next up is check with your schools or workplaces to make sure you can get it done. I know it's even though it's a simple, cute ear piercing, a lot, of places, a lot of places don't allow it, or a lot of workplaces don't allow it, schools don't allow it, so just check with that. It's not worth you getting in trouble, or even getting fired for a simple ear piercing in the first place, so consult with that. And last but not least, ask yourself, is this something you really want to deal with? Do you want to go through the six to eight months of it healing, you're dealing with irritation, maybe swelling, bumping possibly, pus, blood, stuff happens, you're getting caught, pulled on, pain. And of course, you're not sleeping on it as well, like, like, Put those all together, ask yourself, hey, is this something I really wanna get? I know it's super cute, but you don't wanna deal with all this, so kinda ask yourself that. And once you've made the decision, go over to losebodies.com and cop some beautiful Helix jewelry in all different styles and shapes in titanium or 14 karat gold, or after the care to help clean it for you, check it out, losebodies.com, help support the channel. Of course, if you're not subscribed, please make sure to subscribe, turn on post notifications, and be notified every single time I post. And we'll see you guys back here on the next video. Peace.